Can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, looks perfect. Okay. Great. So, so let me introduce you again, as always, and then <laughs> start. So, um, so the next talk, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Marcelo again, who will talk about extending cube burner to support Qbert CRDs. I'm looking forward to hear more about that. Uh, and feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Marcelo, all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, everyone, for attending this presentation. So, um, I will, as Rama mentioned, so I, I, I will present the extension to Kubeburn to, uh, you know, support Kubevert uh, objects to be created both in Kubernetes and OpenShift cluster to test performance. Most specifically, to test the control plane, you know, performance of uh, of the uh, CRGs and also the plane control plane uh, controllers. So I will start with a short introduction, motivation, describe you know high level the Kubeburn and the Kubevert CRGs that it uh, was added to the Kubeburn and the final considerations. Okay. Okay, for the introduction, the motivation of this work is it's there is like uh, increasing the popularity of VMs. Uh, running in Kubernetes, uh, you know, what means Kubevert. And because of that, there is also increasing, uh, uh, you know, the interest from the Kubevert community about performance and scalability of Kubevert control plane. And, uh, and then the, because of that, it's interesting to have a tool to help to measure those, uh, those things, to test. It's well known to that Kubernetes can safely scale for 4K nodes, for example, with a lot of creating a lot of objects. However, as expected, Kubernetes does not provide any guarantee for third-party CRGs. For that's, for example, Kubernetes disease. And also because of that, due to the lack of CRG support, you know, typical Kubernetes uh, benchmark suits um it doesn't does not support you know um only support plain kubernetes resource again as as expected so the idea is to extend you know one of these benchmark tools to be able to uh you know test uh kubevert uh, objects um the most famous projects for benchmark tools for testing uh kubernetes resource well, it's the Kubernetes itself, the cluster load too, which uh, it's a big tool uh, that Kubernetes has for their uh, performance tests. It's a, a it's a very complex tool, and that actually also creates the the clusters, and and also it's specifically for Kubernetes. So, uh, you know, uh, we cannot like submit PRs to extend it uh, easily, you know, and. Then we also have the VMware KeyBench, which is also creating plain Kubernetes uh, resource uh, and testing it. And OpenShift also has KubeBurner. And this uh, in this talk, we are going to focus on KubeBurner. Okay, so regarding the motivations, um, you know, uh, KubeVirt control plane performance analysis is challenging. Uh, especially because how we con we configure representative workloads, like uh, with how we easily configure different kind of VMIs, you know, with different configurations, as uh, we were seeing all the presentations in the Kubevert Summit, it's we can have like very different configurations uh, that we can apply to VMs and how does it impact the performance? So a tool should help with that. Measuring the performance, how what we measure, what's the the, the timestamps that we can get from the, for example, VM creation. I'm going to talk about that, uh, you know, in the next slides. And also, which kind of metrics are interesting, you know, to be collected to measure the performance. And the benchmark, you know, should help with all of this. So therefore. Uh, we have extended Kubeburn benchmark 
uh, to support kubevirt CRDs to create kubevirt via objects and collect detailed, you know, uh, detailed latency information for uh, deep performance evaluation. So a quick introduction on what kubeburn is. Kubeburn is a tool, you know, designed to stress different OpenShift components. So it creates and delete uh, uh, many Kubernetes objects. It can, for example, create uh, thousands of pods and delete them and get the uh, detailed lattice information that I will describe later. So Kubern is designed to be compatible with the plain Kubernetes, but it also supports some custom OpenShift CRDs. Um, but it's uh, it can be used only for Kubernetes. It's not a specific for OpenShift. Okay. So Kubern is also is it's written in Golang, and and then uh, we can you know easily configure the throughput for object using the client Go library uh, that access the Kubernetes API server. I will talk that later also about that here. So Kubern has some uh, configuration file to create a test. It's a burst test and uh, dense test also that to create many objects. Okay. So this is the, this is the default test that Kubern has. Um, for the, the 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 global configuration, it can have like a write to file, which means write metrics to file. It dumps metrics to file, uh, and then it can be later indexed in, for example, in some other database, Elasticsearch, and and then be visualized the data with Grafana dashboard, or you can just keep lo local data and parse it. To, to do some performance analysis. Um, the other thing that it's very interesting is the measurement that has, for example, pod latency uh, measurement. It has some detailed pod creation latency. So it verifies different pod conditions, uh, you know, timestamps, and, and then we can have like a, for the object, uh, you know, phase uh, conditions, transitions, uh, latency, we can we can show all these uh, metrics, and and then it also has some uh, you know for the measurement some thresholds. It can define some thresholds, for example, via when the via, when the pod sorry when the pod get in the ready conditions, the average of the, all the pods getting the ready condition, and then you put a threshold. And then the execution of the test will succeed or fail, depends on the threshold. Okay. This is also good for maybe CICD, you know, CICD systems that we want to uh, you know, run run tests that will uh, fail depends on the some specific condition. Okay, so and the Kubern also has the definition of jobs, okay. So a job that can create pods, for example, here, then uh, we run a dense test. Uh, it has number of iterations that can, the job can run many times. Then here, as I was talking before, it has this, uh, you know, object creation rate, that's the queries per second, the burst, which basically the, the, the Kubernetes client go, uh, you know, configuration for uh, uh, request rate. And then we can control here the rate that we create the object. And namespace iteration, an iteration can be, uh, we'll have a namespace. If we can have like many uh, tests, many different namespace, objects per namespace, we can have more iterations and also have namespace iteration equal true. And then each iteration will have a different namespace. And Kubernetes, it's well known to, uh, you know, have a uh, scale less when we have more namespace. So it's something interesting to test. Um, and uh, we, the other thing that are interesting is the wait for. Uh, it's wait for a CRG, for example, wait for pod object. And this will be for the ready condition, okay? So it wait for all the pods being the ready condition. 
and it also has some specific pod weight parameter that's the same means the same here uh then the object the objects are defined as with templates so the it's very flexible then so you can have a pod template and the number of replicas the number of objects that will be created with this template and input vars it's you know user defined variables uh the, the template can have many internal variables and then the variables can be defined here uh it's also flexible that you can use environment variables uh bash you know environment variables inside the template and uh to create templates okay so and uh, it also has uh you know the detailed latency that it's it, it collects so the core burn allows you know allow, allows to have uh you know detailed latency it has some list watch informers that is watching for uh events and and then it can have like a create and update events uh, for all the objects and keep it in a you know in a map and and then we can uh you know match all the latencies related to a object so for example this this events um when I even when a pod is created, it can uh, it get the timestamp, you know, uh, information here. Uh, the timestamp also it doesn't have like create pod here the name. It's just timestamp because this you know uh, this part this uh, variable it's used later to index uh, the metrics in Elasticsearch. So it will the timestamp it's actually the pod creation time here. And however, we have other uh, that has more uh, meaningful names like uh, scheduling latency, which the time that a pod enters in the you know scheduling phase, scheduling conditions, sorry, the scheduling condition, uh, you know minus the pod creation time. So we have the scheduling latency of the pod here, um, and and then for all the pods created. We have a lot of samples and it's also report some uh, you know quantiles you know p99 p95 and that can be used later for analysis okay so kubernetes you know kubevert, sorry kubevert it's a kubernetes add-on and to create virtual machines and and to to extend kubernetes you know uh to create virtual machines it's by using uh in the kubevert project it's by using custom resource definition crds and that uh you know uh you can create different and description of different objects and then you and then you have also the controllers to control of this uh, objects and so on okay so and kubevert defines basically uh you know so far three uh set uh, of uh crds mainly so it has the basic one you know the fundamental one is the virtual machine instance the vmi which define the properties of the virtual machine um and then uh it has all you know kubevert has also virtual machine uh crd which actually it's on top of vmi it's creates vmi and it's it's uh, behaves in a way that any user can uh, you know um operate a vm as it operates uh you know uh cloud uh, public cloud or you know open stack it means you can start and you know pause and shut down vms uh using this uh object okay and the vmi can create a uh, sorry a vm can create a vmi object and then we have a replica set vmi replica set which it's identical to Kubernetes replica set, uh, but for VMIs. So it can create uh, many identical VMIs objects with only one um, object, the replica set. Okay, so we have extended Kubern to understand all of these objects, all of the CRGs, especially for the to wait you know this these objects to be in the ready state 
So it must it needs to have some logic inside. Um, and uh, it waits for the desired state, for example, for to the ready state. It can be all it's configurable, can be other states also. And uh, then the first extension, it's to wait to this object, uh, you know, when we run the test. And the second extension is to watch the object's phase, you know, phase and conditions to, to get the timestamps of these, uh, you know, transitions uh, and, and report some detailed latency as it was doing for pod before, but now for the VMs and VMIs. For example, here, we, uh, we still have the timestamp, uh, you know, variable there. The timestamp uh, now can mean the VM creation or the VMI creation, okay? So if it's a VM that it's creating a VMI that uh, the template that we are using to do the test, the, the baseline timestamp will be the VM creation. However, if the template it's creating a VMI, it's not a VM, then the timestamp, the baseline timestamp will be the VMI creation time, okay? So it's understand that when it's watching for the resource. And then it collects the all the pod transitions when the pod is created by the, uh, you know, when the VMI is scheduled, it's, uh, the virtual controller creates a pod. And then we get all the, the, the timestamps, you know, the latency here um, from the uh, VM creation, the VMI creation, all the VMI, you know, phase, and the pod conditions. I'm saying here pod conditions and VMI phase because phase and condition is something a little bit different uh, in the CRGs. Um, but uh, in the VMI, we we get you know phase and conditions as well here. So uh, for the timestamps. So Kubern has some metric collection mechanism. Uh, that as I mentioned before, it can be this is optional, okay? Uh, it can be used, uh, depends on the test that you are doing to collect Prometheus metrics. It can dump the metrics to a to a uh, file or or directly index that to external database, for example, Elasticsearch. Um, it might be help, you know, have a very helpful when you are running multiple tests. And then you want to, you know, uh, isolate those, those data in some uh, other uh, database. But again, it's optional. You can also keep all the data in Prometheus and analyze your experiments and use Kubern to generate the load and also get the detailed, you know, latency that it's collecting from the client perspective. Okay, so from the Kubern, Kubern perspective. Um, so then the third extension, it's a metric profile that it's defining some kubevirt control plane metrics plus many other relevant metrics for the Kubernetes and kubevirt control plane uh, to be collected and analyzed. So when we have these metrics that I mentioned before, in, maybe you can save it to, for example, uh, Elasticsearch uh, to visualize, you know, those metrics that it's indexed in the Elasticsearch, it requires a new dashboard that can, you know, read the data from Elasticsearch and, and plot the new Grafana dashboard I mean here. So I also create a new Grafana dashboard that can read the detailed latency uh, metric that it's collected. For example, here, it's interesting, for example, the P99, you know, latency breakdown, the first, the first figure in the top uh, left, we can see here, uh, the VMI creation and when, where is the, the, mo the biggest latency here? Uh, uh, this experiment, I don't remember how many VMs I was creating, I can double check that later. And um, that I think was uh, 100, maybe 100, or I don't know, sorry, how many VMIs were being created here. Uh, but it's uh, getting the, the worst case scenario, the P99. And we can see that the pod, 
you know, uh, initialization. So the pod scheduled was 32 seconds only, and the pod created also. And then the VMI scheduling, when it's understand that the pod was scheduled. And uh, then the pod initialization, which means, uh, you know, all the uh, virtual launcher, you know, pod, and the libvirt is being initialized and creates the VMI domain and, and so on. It takes five minutes in this case here. And uh, and then the, the pod gets ready, you know, in a few seconds after of the pod is in all the, the pod initialized means all the containers uh, are initialized. And then they will have the containers ready here, all the containers uh, started and it's running. And, and then we have, uh, you know, uh, VM is being scheduled, the state, and we have the VMI ready. So from the, you know, from this, uh, the tailored timestamps, we can understand where the latency is. So, so that we can analyze the performance. Uh, you know, more apart from that, we can also have Prometheus data that as I mentioned before, for example, getting the kubevirt REST client read request count and write request count. So, and then an analyze those informations. Okay, so the final considerations here. Uh, just to summarize, uh, we have extended kubeburn support kubevirt CRGs for performance analysis in a way that it can wait for ready conditions for the kubevirt CRGs. It can collect the detailed uh, latency formations from the CIDs uh, phase and, and conditions. And also, it can collect uh, well-defined Prometheus metrics. There is a set of metrics that are very relevant, relevant for performance evaluation that is defined. And uh, also, it's possible to visualize those metrics uh, you know, when they are indexed in the Elasticsearch using Grafana dashboard. Um, and uh, just, just to have uh, some uh, information here, uh, why it's uh, interesting to use Kubeburn also. So by using templates to define the objects, you know, that will be created, the users can configure uh, representative workloads as with different configurations. For example, creating VMIs with ephemeral disk or PVCs or multi-NICs, or uh, as we were seeing the previous presentation with, uh, you know, network functions, virtualization, and so on. So we can uh, easily define the workload and do performance evaluation when we have multiple templates. For spoiler, you know, spoiler alert, and for future work, um, you know, Cooper now has, uh, when it's waiting for the resource, it has many get and list operation. So it's uh, uh, it's a rather work in progress. Uh, I will submit a PR for that. Uh, in when it's actually already using some uh, watcher for uh, watch the latency, we can avoid using get and list and just use the information from the watchers for wait, you know, the condition of the object. Um, additionally, there are other kind of tests that might be interesting. Right now, we have density burst tests implemented in Kubeburn, and most of the other frameworks are doing also burst tests. However, it's something that we are discussing in this for scalability analysis and something also that Kubernetes is doing, uh, which means the steady state test, which has a constant number of operations per second, create, update, delete, uh, what Kubernetes call churn, but uh, it's a cycling, you know, the these operations, and both burst tests and steady state tests has some um, some uh, 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 some goals, so different goals to test different things. So they are both interesting. And the next step is to implement steady state tests for Kubern. Okay, questions. Good, let's go to that one. We have one question from, from difference between using container disks and PV versus PVCs. Yes, 
So actually, I I didn't run this test, but there is someone someone else running this test. And for example, when we when we run PVCs, it has more you know um, uh, Kube API requests more request the Kube API introducing much more load to the Kube virt control plane, and this impacts the performance. Also, PVCs has an, an additional latency. For example, VMI has uh, a conditions that it's waiting for PVC. So having PVCs, it might it's expected when well when the PVC is being created during the VM VMI creation time, it's expected also to contribute to the VMI well creation latency to wait for the PVC be ready. So yeah, we, we expect uh, many difference when we are using PVCs. So I don't see another question there, which which means that we are perfectly in time. And thank, thank you, Marcelo, for the great talk on Kubeburner. Looking forward to see more results from that. Thank you.